It is definitely my honor to be in Boston um, to share with you um, what's happening in China. I based in China for 11 years. I remember when I first moved from Hong Kong to Beijing, I thought that I'm a Chinese. Hong Kong is only one hour away from mainland China. The only difference is that I grew up in a British education system. It shouldn't be that difficult or different to operate in China. So I agreed to take a job and work in China 11 years ago. But the fact that the culture, the way the business are run, and as well as how the people respond to the answer are so different. I must tell you that it took me four years to learn what I did not know. To give you some example, so sometimes when I speak to an Indian, I realize that they shake their hand, it means yes. But in China, when you notice that, when you ask a question, somebody answer your question saying that it should be okay. It actually means, no, it is not a good idea, but you are the boss, so I will follow. As you can imagine, with the different culture and the way they respond to the answer. I remember when I first moved to China, the e economy was growing. There was relatively few tall buildings in China, but today, the second tallest building is in Shanghai. And in fact, three out of the five tallest buildings in the world are in China. It was no way, 11 years ago, I could imagine China, it could be the economics powerhouse like today in just 10 years. China is in a place of, is in a very complicated place today. There's a lot of questions with complex, complex answer. It is the best way to understand this country that is a shape of gray instead of black and white answer. So in order to help you, I have put the agenda for today in five different frames. First of all, I want to quickly go through two of the major topics of international media today about the economic troubles. But regardless of what's happening today, we need to remember China is still growing. And in fact, IT is the center of the government policy to keep the growth for the next decade. Because of that, there is another implication for international tech company. And developing partnership will be the crucial successful factor for you. And that's why I'm going to spend majority of my time to share with you what are the partnership who are this company and how are you going to partner with them? Now, to begin with, the economic trouble. In the last one year, I've been here, the people, the international media, as well, as well as many think tanks, worry about is the China economy's boom was over. You can see the cover from the Economist, which is a very, it is like an underscore, the ping pong over here. And the next thing, for a lot of tech company, what they worry is that for international tech company is the drop of market share. As you can see from this chart, it is the total market share for multinational company in, since 2011 to today. I take an example of x86 server. It was at the peak of market share in 2011, 77% drop all the way to below 40% today. It is a worry. It makes you ask, is this still the market you should spend the effort? I understand about it, but the truth is that, regardless of what, China is still growing. I'm not going to try to comment or to predict the economy in China for the next five years or whether it is a hard landing in China at this moment. But what I want to help you is to look at what does it mean to the IT industry. From the history, 
actually, whenever the economy is not stable, IT, in fact, is the key strategy to grow. I remember in 2003, when there is a SARS outbreak in Asia, it's actually increased the entire notebook computer market because there is a need of technologies. So I want to help you to look at the different sides of the market. Now, first of all, to address the questions about the economics growth, it is indeed there is a slowdown of economy. In 2015, it was only 6.9%. But sometimes when I say that it's only 6.9%, it is actually still a very strong number. In fact, just purely this 6.9%, it equals to the entire economy of Switzerland, a well-developed country in Europe. When you look at the economy with 11 trillions of market, and it is not a fully mature market, there is a different diversity of growth in terms of industry as well as geographically. There is certainly some industry that was not doing well, like the manufacturing industry, but there's definitely some industry that are doing extremely well. And I also noticed that for the international media, they have a lot of picture about ghost city, meaning that there's a city of a lot of properties built, but nobody uses it. But for me, live in Beijing, or my friends live in Shanghai and Shenzhen, or for those of you, you have visited China for the top tier city in the last few months. You may have the question, so where is the economic slowdown? The West Strong is still pack of people. People are still buying a lot of things. My office every day have a pack of parcel from Timor, Alibaba, deliver product in for our staff. It really depends on the different part of China you're looking at. As I mentioned earlier, this is a very complicated market now. There's no simple answer, yes or no. There is always need to deep dive to look at where is the growth, why there is a growth, and whether the growth will be sustainable. Now, another way to look at the market is that technologies. Now, the donut is actually represents the total ICT market spending for China and US as a comparison. The gray area represents the related second platform spending, and the color rep represents the third platform spending. Now, by 2020, China, in terms of the total ICT uh, spending, which is less than 900 billion, is still less than US, which is estimated to be 1.1 trillions. But if you look at the third platform related spending, it is going to be the largest market in the world. The way China adopted the latest technologies are remarkably fast. And in fact, I can actually use myself as example as well. Today, Every day, I basically order my car through DD, which is uh, Uber equivalent. I actually read all my news from my mobile. I actually call for meeting. I run my survey over mobile, my mobile phone. And then I actually order my lunch, my dinner. And then they have people deliver with coupon, which is even cheaper, deliver to me. And even I order my facial massage and everything. I know some of you are like, Kitty, that is your life. It's facials, massage, and everything. That's nice. But to tell you, I actually, for the last major contract, I actually discussed all the details with my client through WeChat. Today, I have a difficulty to use email to, to set up a meeting with my client in China. This is how the market is changing in China of the way that they're using technologies. Now, the question and the key is that what I find is interesting is China government, in fact, understand about the economic challenge that they are going to face in the future. So since five years ago, the Chinese government have decided to take a painful process to transform the country. China was already in a transition since five years ago to look at four major areas that they want to change. 
first of all, to understand that in the past, the economy was largely based on the cheap labor, producing toys and shoes to the export, uh, export to the, the other country. And we realized that when the key country outside of China is facing their own challenge of economy, they can't depend on it anymore. It is the time to change the economies from export market to domestic consumption. Now, in order to increase the domestic consumption, there will need to increase the, the disposable income. It, at the same time, make China less competitive in terms of manufacturing industry to other countries like India or Vietnam. Because of that, they designed that now it is, we need to change, we need to transform the in industry focus, manufacturing focus to services focused. And at the same time, they realized that in the past, because of the government um, infrastructure investment, it has increased a lot of excess bubble. They can't continue to do that. In the last five years, they are trying to find a way to reduce the investment. And last but not least, the Chinese government does want to improve the way to manage the country. There was a, ma a major anti-corruption campaign since two years ago trying to fix the way to run the government. Now, because of that, we are going through the transitions. It was a painful process, but the government believes that that will be a long-term benefit to the country. Now, then the question is, is it only on paper? Is the government only talk about it? Is there a strategy? or how this strategy is being, being executed. That become the key questions. The fact is that the government has a strategy. And in fact, every five year, the Chinese government have a five year plan. And IT has been the center of the five year plan since the 10th five year plan, which is starting from 2000. They start to have like to put in IT as a main education system for primary and secondary school, create and help to develop professional services that they can actually provide services for the smart city project today. And even for the last five years, they have a major broadband China campaign to make sure that the last bottleneck of IT, which is connectivity, can be resolved. Today, 95% of the city in China are broadband created, it's connected. Now, this year, 2016, is the beginning of the 13 five-year plan. And it is very clear to lay out four major objectives. And all these objectives, you can actually collect back to the four key transformations the government have designed. First of all, to improve and increase the services and smart industry, which is like clearly the number one thing the government need to address is now we, we cannot be export dependent. What can I do to upgrade myself in terms of manufacturing? Continues to create innovations and make sure that there is new entrepreneurs in China to move to the next technologies. Environmental protection, this is always the, the heart of the issue for all the governments at the moment. And also globalization. We need to make sure that it is not just in China, but start to have blind, blind actually can step outside of China. This is the four major objective for the 13 five year plan. And in order to make it work, the government also have set up six initiatives as well. Now, by now, you will realize that the Chinese government like a lot of number, four objectives, six initiatives, and you will hear more number later. So my first tips to you is that if you want to set up strategy in China, put it in number. Now, the sixth initiative, again, is highly related to the four objectives. First of all, I start, I'm not going to spend a lot of time to talk about this sixth um, initiative because, in fact, the government has six, uh, 800 pages of report to, about, to lay out the detail of the 13 five-year plan. My job is actually to simplify it, to make, to make it make sense for you 
as an international tech company, and this is what we think is the most important six in initiative. Make in China 2025. The whole objective is that to transform the whole manufacturing industry from China from a low, the cheap labor dependent market to a high end manufacturing industry by using information technology. As you can imagine, robots, IoT, 3D printing, drones, they are all key technology within the, the, uh, within the Make in China 2025. Now, it's not just using this as a tool to improve the manufacturing industry. They also want to make it as their own manufacturing industry. Robots, for example, the government has put in funding to support the development and manufacturing of industry robots to the world. In my opinion, there is a bit of loss in translation for Make in China. It's actually include the Make in China, which is like to improve the whole efficiency to, make, to produce product in China. Make for China, which is to change from export market to domestic need. There will be new product created because of the domestic, domestic market need, which is made for China. And also because of leveraging the scale, now they can actually sell the product outside of China, which is made by China. I think this is all inclusive in this initiative. Now, the next initiative is uh, internet. The government also realized that in order to increase the domestic consumption, internet and e-commerce is the best tools. It's the most cost-effective tools, especially with 1.3 billion people. This is the best way to help to create the domestic market. The, at the same time, it is actually quite a complementary to the Make in China 2025 because there is actually issue when there is more automation happen in the manufacturing industry, the Internet Plus, Inter Internet Plus in the initiative can create a lot more job op uh, opportunity to the market. At the same time, it creates a lot of new innovation company in China. Big data, which is China itself has 1.3 billion people. It itself has a huge population and it's becoming a more wider economy. Today, we are looking at the market as about have almost like 800 million smartphone users. And it will soon to hit 1 billion smartphone users in China. And I'm not even touched to the point of IoT yet. So you can imagine the amount of data it's going to create in China. There's a variety of reasons for the Chinese government to build up massive infrastructure to store the data, to analyze the data, and even most importantly, to monitor the data, how the data being used and who have the right to use the data. So this is all in the big data initiative. Smart city, one of the key trends of China is that there is hundreds of millions of people are moving from the countryside to the urban city. It is important for the city government to make sure that they can build the city smarter and also to make sure that they can control the pollutions. This is part of the key scheme of uh, environmental protections. Bells and roll. This is actually the idea to start to sell and trade, to build major infrastructure project from China to outside of China through Asia, Middle East, and Europe. In the past two years, President Xi Jinping has visited every single city in the route of Belt and Road. And it is actually in inspired from a hundred years ago idea of Silk Road, which is a major trading route from China to Asia, Middle East, and uh, Eastern uh, to Europe. Now, in order to make it happen, the Chinese government have initiated the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, which includes 64 countries today, which is included the UK as well. And they, for this round, they're going to charge 4.4 billion people in this campaign. And the last one, it's about secure and controllable. The Chinese government realized they want to be on top of everything. They want, although it is important and strategic for the government to build and develop IT, but it is also important to make sure that 
information technology is not going to be the source of instability and as well as the political opposition of the Communist Party. It is very important for the government so that to know that they are in control. Now, with this sixth initiative, which is highly related to the four objective, and it is also highly related to four major transitions the government are facing. As you can see, IT is important. It's definitely the center and heart of the whole strategies. But what does it mean for the multinational company? First of all, definitely there will be a lot of new solutions and new technology will come out because of all these different initiatives. At the same time, because the Chinese government own a lot of company, which is their own enterprise. They need to make sure that technology is not going to kill them, but can help them to transform, to make sure that they will remain competitive. So a lot of the solution is not just about creating new company in the market, but also to help the tra traditional company to survive. At the same time, it will definitely create new company, new technology in China. Now, for those of you, I understand that you may not interest to be to you, you may not interest about the China market, but it is also important to look at what is going on in China because there will be new competition coming out from this country. With all these things in place, what we do see is that the government always have a policy in their heart is that. They want to protect the local company. They want to develop the local, local company. And at the same time, they also want to help the local company to innovate. It really depends on their core competence of today. Now, to very quickly to give you an idea is that by looking at the traditional IT industry, by hardware, software, and services, the one I highlight in blue, this other area, the government have a policy to protect because the local company already are very strong in this area. And in fact, with all this um, item, you can see that those are the, those are the multinational companies are losing share to the local company. The one in the gray color is basically the area that the government tried to develop. There is lack of local company that they can develop the technologies at the moment. Now, related to the innovations, I have mentioned about the whole six um, initiatives in China. They are all highly, very close related to the IDC defined four platform, uh, third platform, as well as the sixth innovation accelerator. I know the whole day we are going to talk about this diff 10 different items, not going to go through it in details, but for all the 10 items over here, the government, or they are company, are already focused. Robux, Robux, I have already mentioned, 3D printing in China is already the biggest in the world. Even Tencent, they have, uh, Tencent which is a major internet company, and in fact is the biggest uh, gaming company in the world, they are spending tons of money to develop AR and VR technology in China. Baidu, they specially hired somebody from Google to develop connected system, deep learning. All of them, you can actually find a different type of projects related to it. Now, because of that, regardless whether it's under the frame of protect, develop, or innovate, it is crucial for international company today to find your partner in China. And more importantly, is actually to make sure you can be involved in the 13 five-year plan. Now, some of the people told me that, well, I don't want to be too close to the Chinese company, so I don't really want the 13 five-year plan. But as you can see, and the way I explain it, there's no way that you can avoid the 13 five-year plan. There's always something related to it. It can be a major mega state-owned enterprise transformation project or a new Internet Plus initiative. It's all related to everybody's in China. So it is important for you to be involved and understand about the 13 five-year plan through your partner. So in order to help you to understand the partnership in China today, I'm going to share with you three examples from the HP Enterprise, Microsoft, and Qualcomm. HP Enterprise, they sold 51% of their share in China to Unix to create a new company called New H3C. 
Microsoft have a joint venture with a local company called CETC to create local versions of uh, Windows 10. Qualcomm have a joint venture with a city gov with a province professional government, uh, Guizhou government, to create Chinese version ARM-based server chipset. Now, there is a lot of different type of partnership, and you have a lot of familiar names uh, in your mind already. But what I want to do is that to introduce you to some new names, and they are actually the heart of the whole strategies in China. And there are five different directions, and they're all related to the six uh, initiatives I have mentioned. The first one is related to four key Chinese IT companies. They are all state owned enterprise and they are the key company to drive the China stra IT strategies moving forward. City level and the professional government is always a very good candidate to partner with because number one, they, they themselves have smart city project. Number two, city government, they themselves see another city as a competition. They want to be different. And the third, they always be the one to give you taxation benefit. The third um, direction is about licenses because as I, big data is one of the key initiatives. The, the people, and then there's a lot of uh, restriction of using data in China or using a lot of system in China. To have a partnership with those people, they have a licenses in China is very important for you. And then the state owned enterprise. Because of the Bells and Road, in, in, Bells and Road in Initiative, the Chinese government have encouraged or actually forced the state owned enterprise to step outside of China. Imagine now they are not just in China, outside of China. What they need is actually a partnership with international company. Among all the directions, I would say that this is the one I would encourage you to really spend the time to think about your long-term strategies because this is the one to really help you to open the door, to talk to the local company, and share and help them to be successful outside of China. And the last one is about the internet company, which is not just unique for China, around the globe as well. Now let's start with the four key Chinese company. The four key Chinese com company begin with the first one, Tsinghua University, which is actually you can imagine, it is called the China MIT in, uh, MIT in China, which is very focused on technologies um, in terms of the education. Um, the next two companies have a very similar name, is CEC and CETC, which is a China Electronics Group, a China, a China Electronics Corporation, and China Electronics Technology Corporation. They both owned by the Ministry of uh, Industry and Information um, uh, Department in China, MIIT. And then the last one is called the China uh, Academics of Science. So these four organizations, as I mentioned, are all state-owned enterprise and they really drive the, help the government to drive the IT strategy. Tsinghua University, you're probably quite familiar with them because of UNIS. They, UNIS is actually one of their subsidiary. They are the one, as I mentioned, uh, have a partnership with um, HPE in China. And more than that, and in fact, Intel has 10% share of one of their, um, their uh, brand as well as Spectrum and Rocktrip. Now, supposedly, Unis say, suppose will invest 15% to Western Digital. However, it was suspended or actually was being investigated by the US government and this is not going to happen. This is only one subsidiary of Tsinghua University. They, they, in fact, Tsinghua University have a lot of different subsidiary as well, but there are three more focused on the IT developments. I just mentioned about Eunice. There's another one called Tsinghua Tongfang. In fact, they are one of the major PC company in China, and they are very focused on devi developing uh, the client devices in China. Now, the third one is more focused on the uh, IT-related um, properties market, which will estate market. They actually own one of the major data center um, science park in China. So these three companies, subsidiary, under Tsinghua University, you can see that they have a focus on um, enterprise hardware, um, semiconductor, devices, and consumer electronics and as well as real estate related to technologies. 
Now, for the, the other two companies, CEC and CETC, CEC is actually more focused on developing, this is all the subsidiary under CEC, they're more focused on developing software and industry solution. And CETC, in fact, this is a very interesting company. They used to be the company only developed technology for the military, for the army, for highly sensitive department in China. So under the initiative of secure and controllable, now you can imagine they are now stepping up to actually change the ministry great um, solution to the commercial usage. What is making me interesting is the recent partnership. CEC have a partnership with IBM, but what is really interesting is that their partnership with Microsoft, that to de develop of my, uh, Windows 10's China version in China, that you can imagine they basically can take care of the sensitivity of security in China. It also tells us that there is a way we can actually um, take care of the sensitivity issue from the government by partnering with the right partner in China. Now, the last one out of the four major Chinese company is um, CAS, which is a Chinese Academics of Science. Now, this organization, every one of them is a professor or a doctor. They are the top talents in China. The objective of this organization is to develop the future IT. They was the company, as a very early stage, invest and help Nanovo become the successful PC company. And today, the fastest computer is owned by Xu Guang, and Xu Guang is part of their uh, subsidiary uh, investment as well. They already have the first um, listed company for robotics industry. Sazen is the first robotics uh, company listed in the China um, stock market. As you can tell, their focus is to help and develop the next technology. In order to do that, they also help to develop and create talents. So they have this um, plan, it's called 100 People Plans, Bai Yan Zihua, and 1,000 People Plans, Qian Yan Zihua. I know it sounds funny, but I have warned you, there's a lot of number in China. So this is to help to invite and to find talents from Silicon Valley back to China and help to develop the new technology initi uh, initiative in China. So to put all these four together, you can see that these four companies help to drive semiconductor initiative, enterprise hardware initiative, hardware initiative, industry solution, security issue, as well as the future IT. Now, city and professional governments, which is related to the smart city, of course, it can have some other related initiative as well. Um, the good example I want to share is actually the partnership between Qualcomm and the Guizhou government. You probably don't know where is Guizhou. Guizhou actually is below um, Sichuan, where the panda live. Um, it is actually is a very poor uh, province in China. Until now, it's still not too many people know where is this place. But this place, if you look at the total IT spending, it's already 153 million in 2015. Um, in terms of the total shipment of smart connected devices, it's already bigger than Singapore in this um, province. In fact, in any province of China, you can, you can name it like the equivalent like market in the world. And also, President Xi Jinping has named the Guizhou government as the hub of future big data center. In order to do that, they're going to run the second major global uh, big data center in Guizhou in May. And in fact, the three telco carrier, in order to support the whole initiative, they are going to put their key data center in Guizhou. Now, there is one province that I have highlighted. This is actually up and coming, the most important um, province we see. Now, there's like a different route that you can actually select the, your partnership with the different um, city and professional government. You can go through the route of the fastest growing province help them to make it faster, or you go through the route of the uh, province that they actually have a very, very slow um, a GDP growth, and it is typically they are very focused on manufacturing industry. If you are a very focused solution provider for manufacturing, 
this is the province you want to partner with and help them. Or you go through the route that if you're more focused on cloud computing or highly connectivity related um, solution, this is the 10 broadband um, backbone hubs in China that they can provide faster connectivities in the um, city. We predict that there will be a lot more data center um, built in, within these 10 cities. The licenses, which is more related to the big data as well as the issue of secure and controllable. Now, um, there's some, in, in China, there's a lot of restriction. The people actually need a license to run a lot of different things. So this is some of the example I would just want to introduce to you. For example, the license to run a value added service for broadband. If you want to provide um, public cloud solution, you have to have a partnership with them. Um, there's no other choices. Um, even to, um, to run a location service, you need to partner with the um, company that they have the license for MAP. So there's a lot of license that you can actually partner with them at the moment. Now, the other one is the state-owned enterprise. As I mentioned, because of the Belt and Road Initiative, they are forced to step out of China. Now, to do that, they actually need to restructure themselves. One of the examples, which, which is more a successful cases at this moment, is actually the manufacturing of bullet train. Now, in order to make themselves more competitive outside of China, the government actually have combined the two major bullet train company, the CSR and C and out the, the, the China South Railway and the China North Railway together into one single company, CRRC. This company, since it combined, I think probably more than a year now, it's actually not too long. They already win project in Thailand, Indonesia. Now, I have this presentation two weeks ago in San Jose. I did the same presentation. Two weeks later, they just win another project in Chicago, in the US. It was a 1.3 billion project for bullet train, but because of this um, um, project, the government is going to save 7 million maintenance services per year. Now, imagine why I think this is important for you. If like for everything that you really want to prioritize and think something about your long-term strategies in China, this is the one. Imagine this company, that they actually need to invest and they need to be in other parts of the country, of, uh, of other country. What they need is a company can help them to provide a global standard solution systems and help them to understand how they can market themselves and operate themselves outside of China. Now, there is a roadmap of all the different industries in China. Whatever you can see that the government start to announce about the transformation or restructure of state enterprise, you know that they're trying to get themselves ready outside of China because of the Belt and Road Initiative. Now, the last, and the last one, I'm not going to spend too much time about it, is because, uh, because it's happening in US as well, is the internet company. Now, for every single industry, you already see some leading um, Internet Plus uh, related company. Now, by the way, why it called the Internet Plus be basically inter Internet Plus education, Internet Plus healthcare. So it's an Internet Plus industry that create new opportunity as well as to help traditional industry to transform themselves. Um, you can go through the obvious choice. The three major Internet company is Alibaba, Baidu, and 10 cents. And in fact, the number of x86 server shipment in Alibaba is actually bigger than the entire market of Brazil. This is a very big uh, company. You can obviously partner with them, or you can actually look at all the different industry leaders and then partner with, that, with them, or like those people that they are not the leader, but they need help for the industry cloud. There's a lot of industry cloud uh, building in China. The concept is well, widely accepted in China at the moment. One thing I want to share with you, what I see is different, is that because of the Internet Plus initi initi initiative, we actually got, went out and then talked to some of those companies, I, um, what is the biggest challenge you're facing today? Because your scale is actually quite big. You say that they have a hard time. I'm actually quite surprised to hear them. They have a hard time to define what they need. They can't even define what is called data. Because there's too many users. There's too many new users sign up for the system every day. They can't define it. So they have a difficulty to actually help themselves to scale. 
and they are scaled in a way that is just so fast, it's very hard for them to just use the current technologies today. This is the five direction. My suggestion to you is that don't just go for one direction. You should have a in, you should have a strategy for all five directions to make sure that you can maximize your opportunity as well as minimize your risk in China. You know what I mean running risk in China. So it is important that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, to close my um, presentation today, uh, I want to share one video for you. Before to roll this video, um, it's actually it's a game or a tradition in China. During Chinese New Year, we give out lucky money in a red envelope. Okay? So traditionally, you give it in a physical format during Chinese New Year. Now, because of technology, WeChat, they come up with this virtual um, red envelope. It was like crazy in China. And the game is that like, you have a whole group of, uh, you have a group, but you, for example, you have a group of 100 people, you will only give out 20 red envelopes, and they need to grab it very quickly. Okay, that is the game. And, but you can see that this is crazy in terms of the, in terms of the number. Now, I'm going to roll this um, video. There's no sound, so you can actually look at, it, look at them and then still listen to my voice. Okay. So this is my group in China. I have my team in China. So I designed a Chinese New Year, I should give the red envelope, right? So I actually sent out the red envelope. And then this is how all these people having all this icon. You know, this icon is like somebody even bothered to create this icon for this game. And this icon basically to tell me, thank you boss for the money. Boss, I can't grab it, can you send it again? There is a lot of icon like this. Now, what I want to say is that you may have the best technologies. You probably have the best technology in the world. But if you don't understand about the culture, it's very hard for you to capture, to attract the scale of customer that you need in China. Because the margin is not going to be the same in mature market in China. China today is facing a lot of problem because of the transformation, because of the economic troubles. For the international technology company, you are facing a new set of competitions. You are facing a different type of culture. As I mentioned to you, it took me four years to learn what is happening over there. But China is a big market. There will be new competition come out. The 13th five-year plan, the government has spent more than a decade to prepare it to make sure that China will remain the economics powerhouse in the world. Because of that, partnership is crucial for you. And especially when the government always have a protection, protect, develop, and innovate in their mind. Now, my first advice to you, my last advice to you is that if you want to go to China, try not to go by yourself. There is an old phrase, saying, old phrase to say that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go